Now that here is the third video of a whole sequence that focuses on the Kalman filter. In this video here, I talk you through the second simplest finance example. The goal of this video is to walk you step by step through one realistic Kalman filter application. Although that is the second simplest parameterization that we talk about, Reality-wise, it's already pretty realistic. That is because we will use realized excess returns to learn the time series of the ex-ante expected equity risk premium. So let's start. The setup of the consideration is as follows. We have a measurement RT tilde, which we assume to coincide with two terms which are connected additively. We have a mu tilde t, which is the ex ante expected risk premium, and we have the epsilon t being the measurement error, which we assume is drawn from a Gaussian distribution with mean zero and a variance sigma square. We also have a state equation, which says, which we assume says that the mu tilde t is simply the mu tilde t minus one plus epsilon mu t, which is another Gaussian shock with mean zero and variance sigma square mu. So in words, that system here says that the investor measures in each time period t a realized excess return r tilde. And the investor assumes things knows whatever either from a model or from prior research, that these measurements coincide with the sum of the ex ante expected risk premium and a Gaussian white noise measurement error. And for whatever reason, the investor also believes that the expected risk premium moves over time according to that AR1 process with autocorrelation coefficient of one and a Gaussian noise term. I also consider it important to mention that it's assumed that the investor knows the measurements of the excess returns over time, as well as the parameters of the system, which here are sigma and sigma mu. While the investor does not observe the observations, uh, the realizations of mu tilde t, of epsilon t and of epsilon mu t. So let's go through the Kalman filter with the simplest numerical numbers to see how the filter works. I assume that sigma is 20%, which coincides with roughly the market volatility. And I assume that the ex ante expected risk premium has a volatility of 2%. Now, in t equals zero, the investor needs to start with a view on the value of the current ex ante risk premium. Now, I assume the investor has just no clue. Mathematically, the investor translates that into what is called an uninformative prior, which I specify as follows. Mu1 conditional on F0, so that says the ex ante expected risk premium for the period zero to one conditional on F0 information is assumed to follow a Gaussian distribution, which is centered around 5% with a variance of E to the 12. So the 5% mean is not crazy when modeling equity excess returns as the average equity risk premium in the US has been somewhere around 5%. At the same time, the gigantic variance e to the 12 makes the bell shape of the Gaussian look more like a flat line. Now that captures this notion that the investor has simply no clue of where the ex ante risk premium is and that he wants the data to speak. So now let's condense the information a little bit. As of t equals zero, the investor's belief about the expected 
equity risk premium for the time interval from zero to T is as follows. The investor ex expects the realized risk premium next period as of F0 to be 5%. And the uncertainty, meaning the variance of R1 tilde conditional on F0 has two parts. It's the uncertainty that comes from not knowing what's the value of the ex ante risk premium and it's the variance that comes from the measurement error. So we therefore have these two variance terms conditional on time zero. Plugging in the numbers, we would have e to the 12 plus 0.2 to the power of two, which is a huge number something like 162,754,83. So it's huge. Now we shuffle time forward by one period. So we are now in t equals one. And the investor observes the realized excess return, r tilde one. I assume it took the value of 20%. So for that example here, I assume R tilde one is 20%. So the resulting prediction error is 15%. Now let's denote that prediction error with the symbol mu one. Note the Kalman filter estimate for mu tilde one, so for the ex ante expected equity premium is unbiased. That says that the average prediction error needs to be zero. So a positive prediction error, like in my example here, gives us already an indication that if anything, the forecast in t equals zero was too low. But by how much? Kalman argues that this question can be answered with plain OLS logic. The key question is, what can we learn about the ex ante expected risk premium from that realized 15% prediction error? Kalman derives that the optimal rate of learning should be the slope coefficient that you obtain when you regress the expected risk premium onto the prediction error. The slope coefficient has the well-known expression of a covariance term over the variance. So in summary, Kalman derives that the optimal learning rate equals with the following ratio. Now the denominator tells us how much can we expect to learn about mu tilde one from observing nu one are set in more word expressions. How much can we learn about the ex ante risk premium between zero and one by observing the measurement error in one? Now the denominator normalizes the linear learning by the expected variance of new one. Now notice, we cannot formally run a regression as we have only one data point, the new one. But the parametrization of the setup allows us to compute that covariance and the variance term explicitly. So you really see why model assumptions are sometimes really useful. They allow us here to compute that ratio. So all you just need is that the model assumptions are correct. Now let's continue. As a sign of appreciation and respect for Kalman's work, the optimal learning rate is usually abbreviated with the letter K. So in summary, the optimal learning rate at time T equals one equals K one, which coincides with the ratio of the covariance over the variance term. Now for our application here, it also holds that K1 is in the interval of zero and one. Now when K1 equals zero, 
that implies that no learning takes place. While when k1 is 1, that implies that perfect learning occurred. So now let's go back to where we stopped. We had a 5% ex-ante forecast for the expected risk premium between the trading period t equals 0 and t equals 1. Now, in t equals 1, after seeing the 15% measurement error, uh, the 15% prediction error, that forecast should be updated as follows. It should be 5% plus the optimal learning rate times the 15% prediction error. So we could therefore write that the expectation of mu tilde 1 conditional on F0 was 5%, while the expectation of mu tilde 1 conditional on F1 is 5% plus K1 times 15%, where the realized return R tilde 1 is part of the F1 information set. Now there are two remaining questions on the table. First, how large is K1? And second, how large is the remaining uncertainty? Meaning how large is the conditional variance of mu1 tilde conditional on F1? Now to keep the video on an intuitive level, I simply tell you that one could show with a bit of algebra that K1 coincides with the following expression. And for my numerical example, the resulting optimal learning rate in t equals 1 would be e to the 12 divided by e to the 12 plus 0.2 square, which is basically 1. Yeah, numerically, it's 0.9999754, so it's just 1. Now, let's tease out some intuition from these last two equations. So first, k is also called the signal-to-noise ratio. Second, as k converges to 1, or if it approaches 1, that implies that the sensor is very precise, as the variance of epsilon 1 would approach 0. So the investor would learn in t equal 1 the correct value of the ex ante expected risk premium, mu tilde 1. And I call that perfect learning. It also implies that the realized excess return in 1 would be the expected value of mu tilde 1 conditional on F1. Perfect learning because perfect trust in the sensor. Now, on the other hand, if K1 converges to zero, which would be the result if an imprecise sensor becomes really large, meaning the variance of epsilon 1 is really huge, then learning would not take place. Because you simply mistrust that the observation is meaningful at all about the signal. So therefore, as a result, in that setting, with k1 approaching 0, the ex-post and the ex-ante prediction of the realized value of the expected risk premium would just coincide, which we can state as follows. So let's turn to the last issue. What is the conditional variance of mu tilde 1 as of time 1? Well, that variance term can either be as large as the conditional variance of mu tilde 1 conditional on F0, or it could be 0. Now, it coincides with the former if no learning took place in t equals 1. But it coincides with the latter, meaning the conditional variance would be 0, if there was perfect learning happening in t equals 1. So given that intuition, it wouldn't come likely as a big surprise to learn that the ex-post variance 
equals the ex ante variance times 1 minus the learning rate. Mathematically, we can write that as follows. For my numerical numbers, the resulting ex post variance would be e to the 12 plus 0.2 square. That's my ex ante variance. And now 1 minus the close to 1 learning rate. Plug in all the numbers and you see that the ex post variance would be 0 0.04, which taking the square root translates to a 20% volatility.